Your lunch looks like pig slop. <laughs> With those words, my boss belittled the lunch that my husband and daughter had lovingly made for me. I put up with her insults for a long time, but this time I couldn't hold back, and I finally stood up to her. Her harassment escalated after I stood up to her. Then tragedy struck when my husband was in an accident and our life was turned upside down. Worn down in body and spirit, I finally quit my job. Fast forward a few years, why do you always have it so good? My old boss said to me when we met again, my name is Remy. I live with my husband, James, and our five-year-old daughter, Mabel. Today's lunch looks delicious. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. I'll probably be late from work today, so enjoy your time with Dad. Please pick up Mabel from the child care center. Okay. This is a typical morning scene in our household. I'm always rushed and bustling about, yet my husband and Mabel watch over me with smiles, never uttering a single complaint. I work in caregiving. It's a shift job with early and late hours, and overtime is common due to staff shortages. The work can be physically demanding, but I'm proud of what I do. It's my family's support that has enabled me to continue. Good morning. I arrive at work five minutes before start time. Remy, your hair is a mess. You take care of your family in the morning and then work full time? You're truly amazing. My single colleague always praises me when I rush into the workplace. Blessed with good colleagues, I've been working hard, but enjoying my job. However, there's one person at my workplace who doesn't think well of me. Remy, you're cutting it close again today. You have a lot to do, so please come earlier and prepare. I'm sorry. The one who always finds something to complain about me is my female boss, Sissy, a veteran in this office. She's been here since I joined. From the beginning, I sensed she was harsh, but at first, she never said anything personal. If I asked her about work, she taught me well, and honestly, I relied on her in some ways. But since I returned from maternity leave, Sissy's attitude towards me has become harder. I didn't know why, but since others were also treated harshly by Sissy, I thought it was just her preference, and tried my best not to get on her bad side. One morning, I woke up to find that my husband and Mabel, usually sleeping beside me, were not in bed. Seeing the sunlight coming through the curtains, I was startled and looked at the clock. The clock hands were pointing at 7 o'clock. Oh no, I have to make lunch! I ran frantically to the kitchen. Good morning, Mom! I heard Mabel's cute voice from the kitchen. Sorry, I overslept! You must be tired from working late, so we let you sleep, just for a little while. We don't need lunch today, Mabel and I, so it's okay. All right, I went to sleep last night without even looking at the schedule for today. Today, Mabel had lunch at school, and my husband was out, so no lunches were needed. My husband and Mabel seemed to have refrained from setting the alarm, being considerate of my accumulated fatigue. Mom, eat this! We made it together! Mabel said this, and she and my husband smiled at each other. In Mabel's hand was my lunchbox. It was packed with sandwiches filled with boiled eggs, ham, cheese, and chicken, along with vegetable sticks and fruits. You two made this for me? I was so surprised that my voice cracked. Recently, interested in cooking, Mabel often helps prepare meals, but she's only five years old. She can't use the stove or knife without me watching. On the other hand, my husband usually only makes boiled eggs. These two seem to have made lunch for me. I felt like crying. Mabel, Dad, thank you so much. My feelings were so overwhelming that words could not convey them, and I hugged them both. Every time I eat the lunch you make, Mom, I get so energized. Today, eat this lunch and get energized too. Mabel's words made my husband smile too. How happy I am. Thanks to them, my fatigue was completely gone, and I headed to work feeling light and happy. Then came the long-awaited lunch break. When I opened my lunchbox, a natural smile spread across my face. Sandwiches with finger marks, uneven vegetable sticks, slightly crushed fruits. Everything was adorable. I could see the two of them getting up early in the morning and working hard in the kitchen. Every bite made me feel energized. What are you so happy about? I suddenly glanced at the side, and there stood Sissy. Sissy peered into my lunchbox. Wow, that looks disgusting. Your lunch looks like pig food. <laughs>
Misty said, laughing. What? Pig food? Normally, I would silently endure Sissy's insults without responding, but I just couldn't stand her insulting my precious family. I couldn't forgive her for calling the food that my husband and daughter worked hard to make for me pig food. Enough is enough! I slammed the desk and yelled. The break room fell silent. Sissy was momentarily taken aback by my outburst, but quickly glared back. It's the truth. You shouldn't defy your boss like that. You won't get away with it. With that, Sissy stomped away, her footsteps echoing. Ah, uh, my blissful time was ruined. I closed my eyes to calm my anger. It's okay, I have my husband and Mabel. Thank you for the meal. I had finished the lovingly prepared lunchbox and I felt recharged with energy and courage. I'll do my best this afternoon. As I returned to my desk, ready to work, I found a pile of colorful files. Wait, wasn't I supposed to be in charge of rehabilitation this afternoon? That's the thing. Sissy told Remy to do this, all by herself. Colleague said, pointing to the stack of files. These were files related to inventory management. By herself? I'll help once you're done. Colleague whispered, glancing at Sissy, before hurrying away. Inventory now? And all by myself? Today's overtime is confirmed. From that moment on, Sissy's harassment of me only worsened. Ah, <sighs> you've been sighing a lot lately. Are you okay? I'm having a hard time getting along with my boss. I love my work, though. At home, I tried not to think about work, but my husband and daughter were worried about my constant sighing. Mom, don't overdo it. Encouraged by my husband and daughter, I managed to keep working. Then, one day during work, I got a call from an unknown number. Hello, this is Sunshine Medical Center. May I speak to James's wife? That's correct. Your husband was in an accident and brought here. Thankfully, his life is not in danger. But could you come here as soon as possible? What? Uh, yes, I'll be there right away. My husband's in an accident? I tried to calm myself with deep breaths but my heart races faster and faster. A colleague who was working with me looks at me with concern. Just leave the rest to me, Remy. Calm down. After I explain the situation, my colleague sends me off with these words. Rushing back to the office, I catch Sissy's eye. Um, it seems my husband's been in an accident and has been taken to the hospital. Huh. Sissy responds indifferently without looking at my face. Um, I need to leave early. Just go on then, it doesn't matter whether you're here or not. Without even looking at me, Sissy says this with an eerie smile. Sissy's nagging continues, but I ignore her, hurriedly prepare, and leave the office. Arriving at the hospital, I find my husband's left leg wrapped in bandages. Remy, I'm sorry to have worried you. I broke my left leg, but as you can see, I'm fine. My husband waves both hands to show me. I was told that his life wasn't in danger, but until I saw him, I was beside myself with worry. Don't scare me like that anymore. I'm sorry. Tears of relief overflow as my husband gently takes my hand. He broke his femur and will be hospitalized for two months. It will be a few months until he can return to normal life and work. From now on, I'll support the family. I declare this in front of my husband to bolster myself. From that day on, our life changed completely. Although it was already quite busy, now I have to care for my daughter, work, and handle my husband's laundry, all by myself. I could only sleep for about three hours. Moreover, I had to adjust my work schedule for my daughter's childcare, drop-off, and pickup. My colleagues said, We help each other in times of trouble. But Sissy took every opportunity to put me down. You can't come early or stay late because of childcare. Normally, parents would help out or something. Anyway, it's because you're so spacey that you guys get into accidents. You and your family really are something interfering with work like this. Huh. Sissy laughs snidely. If I could get my parents to come, I would have done so from the start. But both our families are far away and there's no one nearby to rely on. Others were in the office, but no one cared. Well, if they spoke up to Sissy, they'd become her next target, so no one would risk defending me. I was already feeling constrained by having others do my work, but being criticized not only for me, but also for my family, had shredded my heart. 
That evening, when I stopped by my husband's hospital, he patted the bed, beckoning me to sit. Remy, something's wrong. You don't have to endure anymore. I had been desperately trying to be strong for the family, but my husband seemed to see right through me. I finally opened up to him about Sissy's harassment. After hearing everything, my husband quietly said, Remy, don't push yourself anymore. How about resigning from that workplace? Money's not a concern. As long as you're smiling, our family will be happy. My husband's words began to heal my battered heart. James, thank you. With that, I submitted my resignation the next day. You're just quitting your job in the end, huh? Ignoring Sissy's nagging to the very end, I tidied up my belongings and left the company I had worked at for 10 years. With extra time on my hands, I started cooking with my daughter, accompanying my husband in his rehabilitation, and cherishing the time spent with my family. From the outside, it seemed like I was selflessly supporting my daughter and husband, but in reality, they were the ones helping me. Spending time with the two of them rejuvenated my stress-weakened heart, and I began to feel happy every day. Mom, let's bake cookies today! Sure, we ran out of butter, so let's go buy some. Now I have time to leisurely make sweets with Mabel after she gets back from the childcare center. Hoping for this blissful time to continue, I decided to seriously start studying. Four years later, after finishing shopping and waiting for the elevator, I was called from behind. Remy, long time no see. A familiar voice. My body twitched in response. Turning around, the voice indeed belonged to my former boss, Sissy. I was at a loss for words, but Sissy continued. I live on the top floor here. Oh, really? I had been tense until then, but Sissy's words made my lips loosen. I shifted into work mode. Thank you for renting from us. W what do you mean? Sissy couldn't understand my words. The owner of this high-rise condo is my husband. What are you talking about? Sissy's eyes darted around. In fact, my husband had bought this high-rise condominium when it was newly built four years ago. Then, right after that, he had an accident. While he was hospitalized, I quit my job and started studying frantically, taking over the owner's duties for the condo in place of my husband. Feeling suited for the owner's role, I continued to support my husband, even after he was discharged. I continued my studies, and now I own and manage a condominium myself. How do you like our high-rise condo? The view from the top floor is stunning, isn't it? By the way, a new condominium was built in the neighboring city recently, and I am the owner there. It's close to the station and very convenient. If you know anyone who wants to live in a condo, I can give you a brochure. Shut up! I was eagerly pitching, thinking that someone living on the top floor would likely have money. But Sissy interrupted my words, screeching. Why do you get have all the good things? She's not my boss anymore, so I'll tell her what I really think. I made up my mind to do just that. What are you talking about? Working hard only to be belittled by you. What's so good about that? Sissy's face twisted in anger. You have a loving family, don't you? What? Sissy looked down, murmuring softly. If I had children, I wouldn't feel so miserable. Then Sissy revealed her inner thoughts in a voice so soft it was barely audible. According to her, she had married, but was unable to have children. She wanted them, but things didn't work out with her husband, who desired children too, and they divorced. As a result, all that remained for Sissy was her job, and she worked tirelessly to outperform everyone else. But every time she saw younger people getting married, having children, and taking a year of parental leave, she felt miserable. My busy mornings, rushing into work, seemed to her a symbol of happiness, and she was actually envious. At the same time, she couldn't stand my apparent happiness, blessed with a child and husband, and that's why she was harassing me. Hearing this didn't bring up any sympathy in me. Mixing personal feelings with work and harassing your subordinates is the worst thing a boss can do. I lost my job because of you. What you did is unforgivable. I said that and rode the elevator alone, closing the door. Sissy didn't apologize until the end and just stood there, looking down. Now, three months later, Sissy moved out of the apartment building. Rumor had it that after I quit, Sissy started targeting other staff who were raising children and continued harassing them as she did to me. 
During this time, the company established a harassment consultation service due to stricter compliance in recent years. One day, there was an anonymous tip about Sissy's harassment, and the company conducted an internal investigation. They confirmed the facts and also uncovered that I had been forced to resign due to the harassment. Taking the situation seriously, the company decided to demote Sissy and transfer her to a lower-paying department. As a result, Sissy could no longer afford her rent and had to leave the high-rise apartment building. It's only what she deserved. My husband, who had been worried that Sissy might harass me again, seemed genuinely relieved that she had left the high-rise apartment building. I'm really thankful that you encouraged me to resign back then. Me too. I'm always thankful to Remy. Let's keep it going. With that, my husband reached out his hand. We shook hands and looked up at the vast sky. Our family's future will surely continue, just like this sky. Surrounded by the clear sky, we felt happiness in our everyday life together, as a trio. From the bottom of my heart, I wished to continue this way forever.